Megan Crowley's daily routine is pretty much like that of any ordinary teenager. She has trouble getting ready in the morning. She works on projects with her classmates at Princeton High and races through the halls to get to her next class. And after school, she hangs out with her girlfriends. The topic of conversation, gossip, college, and boys. Megan, did you hear about the Joe Jonas tell-all? Oh, yeah. But this 17-year-old from Princeton, New Jersey, is anything but ordinary. When she was just a year old, Megan was diagnosed with Pompe disease. The rare disorder causes progressive muscle weakness and leads to severe curvature of the spine, or scoliosis. And over the years, that's made it difficult for her to breathe. So seven months ago, Megan made a gutsy decision to undergo a radical surgery to straighten out her spine. Her doctor told her and her parents there was a chance that she wouldn't survive the procedure. You know, I was aware for a number of years that there were surgical treatments that could address and alleviate the scoliosis. But I knew, too, that they were very painful, lengthy, involved, and risky procedures. Patrick, one of Megan's two brothers, also has Pompe disease. He's decided not to have the surgery. Patrick um, adamantly does not want the surgery, and I don't think I could put him through it without his whole heart being in it the way Megan's was. Megan wasn't supposed to live long enough to attend grade school, let alone high school. We were told that Pompe disease was a fatal disease and that Megan wouldn't live past her second birthday. Unwilling to accept that fate, John quit his job as a marketing executive and started a biotech firm to develop a treatment. For more than a decade now, Megan and Patrick have received the life-saving medicine that their own dad helped to develop. You ready? Yep. One, two, three. Kept alive, but not cured by biotech breakthroughs, now a generation of people like Megan and her brother must decide again and again whether to endure painful and risky procedures to address new complications that develop over time. For Megan, that time came shortly before her 16th birthday. The medicine did save their lives, and for a period of time, especially in Megan, it had made her much stronger. But eventually that muscle strength, much of it began to wane. Gradually, her spine started to decrease in its strength and the curve of the spine began to increase significantly to the point where by the time she was 15 years old, it was at about a 100 degree angle. Megan saw a photo of herself one day and she said, I don't, I don't like the way I look in pictures anymore. I think I want to get my back straightened. In the summer of 2012, the Crowleys went for a consultation with Dr. David Roy, a surgeon who specializes in straightening the spines of disabled children. The goal of Megan's surgery was to stop the progression of her curve and allow her to sit straight up in her chair. But right from the start, Megan had more ambitious goals than that. Megan accepted the risks and wanted to go through the surgery because Megan plans on going to college and getting married and having children and didn't see that happening, um, being so uncomfortable in her own skin. So last June, the Crowleys checked Megan into Columbia University Medical Center for what they thought would be a 10-day stay. In the first of two planned surgeries, Dr. Roy drilled screws into several of Megan's vertebrae and cut into some of the most deformed to reshape them. But two weeks later, during the second procedure to insert metal rods into her spine, a warning alarm blared. Her nerve signals, or potentials, had flatlined. That could mean the kid's paralyzed, it could mean, you know, one leg is weak or both legs are weak, it could mean loss of bladder and bowel function, it's just terrible. In order for us to get the potentials back, I had to remove the rods that we had put in. Anything that could possibly harm her was, was removed. It was devastating. He told us that they thought they had lost her at one point. You know, we would think, Ugh, how, how did we do this to her? I couldn't believe we did it to her. Megan was clearly worn out and in a great deal of pain, but she was intent on moving forward. A week later, she went back to the operating room. 
This time, Dr. Roy was able to successfully insert the rods and screws to support a 40 degree correction of Megan's spine. After 32 days in the hospital, she was allowed to go home. And Megan's life has fundamentally changed because of this surgery. Just the simple act of to be able to sit up straight and to look them in the eyes and to have a conversation. That's something that those of us who are healthy, you know, might not be able to relate to, but when you think about it from somebody like Megan's perspective, it's life altering in itself. <laughs> After Megan's surgery, she ended up going back to school right on time, and I think it was the second day of school, she had her junior year photos taken. And when we got the pictures back, she's sitting up straight, smiling, and we knew that we did the right thing. We just had to get through it. I think any surgery like this is a very personal choice. This had to be Megan's choice because it's her life, and it was also about whether she in her heart of hearts knew that she had the strength to do it, and that's something that I couldn't know. She had to know. Surely there will be challenges ahead, but that's not getting Megan down. She's busy making plans for college.